Hi there, welcome to the Top Dog Tips YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the seven most common dog paw problems that they encounter with their paws and what to do about them. Before I begin, if you find our content valuable, please go ahead and subscribe as well as share the videos. If you've learned something new, if you laugh, if it made your day better, please share our content. That helps us grow the channel and continue to put out great, helpful content. Also, you could subscribe to our website, topdogtips.com. If you subscribe to our website, you will receive a free ebook using the link in the description below. And the ebook covers 25 vet recommended homemade dog food recipes. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So dog's paw health is often neglected by pet owners, but it definitely shouldn't be. Your dog's paw pads provide cushioning to reduce stress on their bones and joints, as well as insulation in extreme weather and protection against rough terrain and other benefits. However, paws are definitely not immune to injuries or other health problems. So some of the signs that you will see if your dog has some issues with their paws is them consistently licking the paw, they're limping, or they show limping or lameness, red or inflamed paws, or if there's hair loss on the paws, there's lesions, there's ulcers and with scabbing and blisters, if there's discharge as well as bleeding, or if there's a foul smell. Now, the typical cuts and tears or abrasions are definitely common signs of paw injuries. So your dog's pads may also seem dry or cracked or have loose skin flaps. So it's important that you pay attention to your pet's nails as well because cracked or torn nails can be very painful. So let's start with number one, allergies. Dogs can suffer from allergies just like us, including food allergies and seasonal allergies. If your dog has an allergic reaction, the most common symptom is itchiness, particularly with paws. Other symptoms you may notice include ear and skin infections, as well as anal gland issues. Your dog will probably lick and bite their paws to relieve the itching, which then can further the irritation and make their paw vulnerable to secondary bacterial and fungal infection. So how to prevent this? It's nearly impossible, as you know, to prevent all allergies in dogs, but it's definitely possible to prevent a allergic reactions if you know what your dog is allergic to. Having said that, the only way you know what your dog is allergic to is if they actually have an allergic reaction. So how to fix and solve this problem. The best way to prevent this type of reaction in the first place may not always be possible because you don't know if they're allergic to something until it happens. Obviously, if it does happen, consult your vet. Your vet will then try to figure out what your dog's allergic to through tests and possibly recommend something similar to elimination diet. They may also prescribe certain medications to help with the, with the treatment. Cases of severe allergic reactions usually require hospitalization. Number two is a bacterial and fungal infection. They're a common cause of paw problems with your dog because many of these bacteria live on dog's paw pads. If your dog licks and chews his paws and you notice redness, discharge, or brown discoloration of the nails, he probably has an infection. The most common fungal infection include yeast and ringworm. So the way to prevent bacteria or fungal infection is try to keep your dog's paws clean at all times and make sure to treat any wounds your dogs have because any untreated wounds are a good breeding ground for bacteria and fungi. As well as if it happens to be a yeast infection, diets high in yeast can sometimes lead to this. So just make sure to kind of keep an eye on their diet and pick foods that are low in yeast. Now that's how to prevent it. So if it does happen, the way to fix it would be antibiotics um, that are prescribed by your veterinarian or topical creams or sprays or shampoos. Again, all these can be recommended by a veterinarian if you consult them as well. Well, your vet will typically prescribe the appropriate antibiotic if this happens, which usually lasts from three to six weeks, but your dog will have to take the medication for another week after the symptoms go away. Fungal infections are usually treated with topical creams and ointments, such as hydrocortisone, as well as antifungal shampoos. Some of them may be prescription only, and most of them contain steroids like itraconazole and keto or ketoconazole. So number three, parasites. Parasites like mites and ticks are common, actually, in dogs paws, especially if your dog spends a lot of time outdoors. Pain and infection are the most common signs of parasite related dog paw issues with swelling and hair loss that will sometimes occur. Ticks are especially problematic because they embed between the dog's toes and can be a cause of a variety of tick-borne illnesses. So how to prevent this? There's plenty of great products out there for tick prevention, including different types of collars and topical creams and sprays and powders and tablets. There's also different mite repellents you can use, but it's also 
very important to keep your dog away from mite infested animals. Make sure to keep your home and your dog's quarters clean and sanitized and make sure to groom your dog regularly. So how to fix this if it does happen, you'll have to remove them or let your vet do it for you, which is probably a better option if the ticks get between your dog's toes because that can be kind of finicky. If you're going to do it yourself, just use a special tick removal tool. Mites, you're not gonna be able to see them. They are treated with medication, which can sometimes last for months, depending on the severity of the infestation. Number four is nail problems. So toenails are actually the most sensitive part of your dog's paw. And even something as simple as long toenails can have uh, drastic consequences, like if the nail has a fracture or cracks, or if your dog suffers from a torn nail. And this typically happens when a dog catches his nail on something, which can lead to limping or even bleeding. But an injured nail, fortunately, is easy to recognize if you take a look at their paws and notice that there's something going on there. There's actually another common nail problem and it's ingrown nails. These happen when the nails are not properly trimmed or worn down by walking. There are some other nail problems that can happen like symmetrical onychomidesis or nail bed carcinoma, but these are pretty rare. So how to prevent these nail problems? Pretty easy, all you have to do is clip your dog's nails regularly, so don't let their nails get too long and trim them as often as necessary. Of course, you'd have to do it the right way so you don't cut the quick. As well as a nutritionally balanced diet with plenty of zinc and omega-3 fatty acids can help keep the dog's nails healthy and strong. So if you do run into this issue with nail issues or if something's wrong with the nail, application of uh, topical ointments is usually usually enough to treat these kinds of problems. If you accidentally cut the quick, just make sure you have a uh, styptic powder or gel on hand, like to stop the bleeding and like keep it closed. So it's not in an open environment for bacteria to get in. If it's an ingrown toenail, they first have to be cut and then treated with antibiotic ointments. Number five is actually just regular injuries. So cuts, bruises, tears, lacerations, and any other injuries on dogs can happen because they run around and play on different terrains. Your dog can cut themselves on several things things like sticks, rocks, broken glass, and debris. So how to prevent this is just keep an eye out for sharp objects. If you're taking your dog running or walking on ground, that's rough or pavement. Possibly an option is dog shoes or another form of paw protection, especially if the weather is extremely hot or extremely cold. How to fix this if there is a injury on the paw. Just make sure you treat the paw's cuts by cleaning the wounds with water and any antiseptic and remove the debris uh, if there is any or any splinters or anything like that. When your dog's paw is bleeding, please apply pressure to the wound so you can stop it and put a clean towel and ice on it so you can improve constriction, stop the bleeding. So if the injury is pretty minor, they can be treated at home, but if it's severe, definitely talk to your vet, see if you need to come in so they can help maybe possibly suture it up and prescribe an antibiotic, keep infections away. So number six is dry and cracked paw pads. So dogs' paw pads are pretty rough and strong, so it can help them get traction when they run on smooth surfaces. However, your dog's pads may become dry or cracked due to a number of reasons, including cold weather or hot pavement, dry air, rough surfaces, chemicals, and even excessive licking. Some other conditions can also lead to these problems as well, such as allergies, nutritional problems, endocrine and autoimmune issues. So how to prevent dry and cracked paw pads is just keep their paws well-groomed and the toenails trimmed during very cold or very hot temperatures just further prevent these issues with the paw pads with protective balms if you're going outside or dog booties after the walk just wash your dog's paws with some lukewarm water after each walk to get any chemicals out of their pads to prevent any further damage so if they do have any paw pad problems how to fix it would just first clean your dog's dry cracked pads with lukewarm water and then put healing balm on the pads before you cover them with a doggy sock or a dog booty if those don't work take your dog to the vet to rule out any other underlying problems and see what they would recommend and the last one number seven burns your dogs can get burns on their pads due to sand or asphalt when the summer temperatures can get very hot but you can also get the burns due to frostbite in the winter some chemicals and salts that are not pet friendly can also cause this problem some of the symptoms of dog paw pad or paw problems you may notice if your dog gets burned or frostbitten are blisters on their pads
pads or loose skin flaps and red patches on the skin. Their paws may become swollen in some cases. So how to prevent this from happening is just keep your dog off hot pavement or keep them away from ice or if they're uh, salting the road. You can also put dog booties on to protect them. You can also put some petroleum jelly that can serve as a barrier against salt or other chemicals. If it happens, if they do come in contact with any chemicals that they step on, just make sure to wash their paws right away. How to fix this if they do burn their paw is to treat them at home if it's just minor with an antibacterial wash. Also, don't forget to put some booties on your dog's paws after you wash them and just keep them clean until they heal. You know, serious burns are obviously something you should not try and handle on your own. And I would definitely call your veterinarian because your vet will take care of it in a medical way and sterilize the situation. So there's no way there's going to be any, any infection and they'll put some bandages on the affected area and give them the right pain medication and antibiotics. So there are a couple other dog paw problems. Some of them are cysts, growths, and lumps. These tend to affect the paws themselves or the area between your canine's toes. Treating these though would require more veterinary care because they might need to be surgically removed. It's also common for a dog to get something stuck within their paw, which you can typically recognize because they would probably be favoring a different side or a different leg, but they'd probably be limping. You probably are able to spot the issue with your eyes, but if you can't, an x-ray might be necessary. And it's also possible for your dog to have a fractured toe. This happens from like traumatic events as if something falls on their paw or if they're stepped on. So that's gonna do it for us here at topdogtips.com. Again, if you liked the video, if you found some value, if this helped you, please subscribe as well as share the video with your friends. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.